Tight ends always cause us such misery in fantasy football. If you're not getting one of the top five guys, typically one or two of those guys either are duds or they get hurt, then you're kind of just taking shots in the dark. Well, I'm going to give you my top 20 tight ends, and I'm going to give you a little insight so it's not so much a leap of faith this season. But before we get into that, what's crack lacking? It's your boy, Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know so. And go ahead, become a bro, and subscribe. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Yes, I'm on YouTube. Check it out. It's not half bad. But let's go ahead. Let's dive in to the top 20 tight ends for fantasy football in 2020. And starting off the list is my wide receiver two tier. And yes, you heard that right. I said wide receiver two. And I say that because the top five tight ends last season, they finished anywhere between the 10th and the 24th wide receiver, meaning they were a wide receiver too, basically. At least they had the production of a wide receiver too. And why these guys are so valuable, so sought after, it's because they get a lot of targets. I mean, Kittle, Kelsey, uh, Waller, and Ertz, they all had over 100 targets last year. And Andrews was not too far behind with 98. But if you're looking for a bargain, Kittle and Kelsey, they're not going to be it. You're probably going to have to get them in the second. If you're lucky, maybe third round. Andrews and Ertz, they're typically going in the fourth round. Waller, though, is a bit of a steal. This guy, he's going anywhere between the fifth and the sixth round. Waller, he's going to be a great bargain. The dude was second in uh, receptions last season. He was third in targets of all tight ends. He had five 100-yard receiving games last year. The dude, yes, he doesn't have the touchdown upside. Thank you, Foster Moreau. But he only averaged 2.1 less points per game than Kelsey and Kittle. But you could get this guy in three rounds later. I'm just saying, that's a great deal. Next, we got the high upside potential tier. And yes, you're pro these guys, they're not going to see the same targets as the guys I had ahead of them. But their drop off in production is not as bad as you may think. By waiting just a few rounds longer, you're only going to be losing out on maybe five to seven points per game, which may sound like a lot, but you're going to be stronger. You're going to have a stronger running back core. You're going to have stronger receivers by doing so. Plus, it's not like these guys are just dead in the water. They have top five potential. I mean, for instance, Jared Cook comes at a great value. He's currently got a 10th round ADP. And I'm just saying, take this account. From week 10, no tight end averaged more points per game than Jared Cook. And what was significant about week 10, that was the first week that both him and Drew Brees were healthy since Brees got hurt. The two, they just proved to have really good chemistry. And I'm just saying, you could get him in the 10th round compared to maybe selling out for a Kelsey or a Kittle in the second or the third Gronk, he's currently got a six-rounder, but he's a bit of a question mark. Tyler Higby and Hayden Hurst, they're seventh-rounders, but they don't have the upside of Cook, and that's why I have them at six. On to the more potential than production tier, and yes, that is kind of a scary tier, or at least a scary sounding tier, because if you haven't picked a tight end yet, you might be a little worried, but don't fret. Mark Andrews and Darren Waller, they were typically being drafted after the 12th round. So there is still hope to find a good sleeper. I mean, first guy on this list currently has a 13th round ADP, and it's Mike Gesicki. And believe me, he's probably going to get a lot hotter and more valuable as the season approaches. The guy, he had only two games under five targets since week six. Then you got Evan Ingram with a current uh, ADP of the seventh round. He averaged the third most targets point get, uh, per game at 8.5, but he only he's only started 14 games in the past two seasons. So that's a bit of a hoo-hoo. Matter of fact, next guy I got here, Greg Olson. He's not even being drafted, which you might have to keep an eye on. You want to make sure he is the starter there. But he could see a really good volume because tight ends actually made up a fifth of Russell Wilson's attempts last year. So there's that upside. Just make sure he's a starter. And then you got TJ Hawkins and Noah Fant. Both are going in the 10th round or later. And they showed some bright spots last year, but they weren't consistent. So they have a bit of an upside. Now, Hunter Henry, he's going and he's got an ADP of the eighth round. And I'm a bit worried. I'm a bit hesitant with now Tyrod Taylor at quarterback because statistically running backs they typically follow me on this they lose targets when there's a mobile quarterback 
behind center and those targets they usually go to the tight end but still Henry he's never played a full season at least in the NFL so I would just say be cautious but I still have him at 11th on this list and last but not least is my leap of faith tier and you don't have a tight end at this point then the heck man what are you doing you should have a tight end you should be looking probably for your backup at this point if you want a backup i usually just stream tight ends the week of my starters by but if you're not confident in your starter then there's no problem getting one of these guys and i know austin hooper might be real enticing but keep in mind that this is kevin stefanski's team now last year with uh, the vikings you had rudolph and smith the only combined for 92 targets hooper it'll mean hooper is going to be battling David Njoku, if he's still on the team, and potentially Harrison Bryant for targets. But on a plus side, you got a guy like Blake Jarwin who's going in the 14th round. All these guys are either going in the 13th round or lower. But Jarwin, he saw 43 targets last year, and that was behind Jason Witten. They gave Jarwin a solid extension. Witten, he's now with the Raiders. That's 83 targets up for grabs. Jarwin also, he was averaging more yards after the catch, and he was the vertical threat compared to Witten. So there's a bit of an upside there. I'm just saying Jarwin might be a guy worth taking a shot on. But that's it for the video. Go ahead, do that YouTube thing if you are on YouTube. And if you're not, go ahead, check out my YouTube. It's somewhere on this page. But till next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.